Hello and welcome to the last part of the World's Most Rubbish Trilogy but there we go, what can we do? So I'm going to run through the final uh, third of the garden gardening wise what, I'm, what I've done and what I'm thinking of for the next few months in preparation for next year so we got, we've sort of come across this way with the pergola we've gone up the top up the side of this fence here across the um, back across to that middle bed at the back of the lophosauria um, summary is basically trellis going to go on top of all the fence all the way around a little bit I've just got to decide what size and shape um, and just to put some fence posts in down here but if we move across to this middle flower bed as we're doing it or just a plant bed if you like um, this one's near enough probably the closest to being done out of all of them in regards to both what's actually been done and um, you know idea wise next year I know what I'm doing with it so the thing I like about this bed um, is when you look up you see the edging for this tr it's a triangle shape where it's in between two octagons goes up there and then when you're sort of at this level, it's almost like the complete view I was after. I know everything needs to mature. So if we imagine that drop to its nearest to us as big bushy rosette type fern, then that sort of middle level is taken up with the uh, head of chi, um, I think it's a greeny eye that one, but he's a bit maroony, a bit ready in him that one. So he takes up the middle layer and then the banana is sort of taking up the top layer. And if you think they're all gonna size up a touch, it should work out that that's pretty much the view I'm looking for where they're sort of, it's all encroaching over into the different areas, overhanging the edges and things like that. So the vibe is starting to come along. So that um, ginger, I'm just gonna leave in there and just chop them down and mulch them and see what happens. Dryopteryx Wallichiana is there because there's a Dryopteryx Wallichiana there. Likewise, on the far side of this one, um, that's a Dryopteryx errata there, and there's an errata there, so that tall tallies up. And then if we come across here, we've got the Lophosauria behind the banana there, and then there's going to be another Lophosauria where this uh, Dania is, but this is still going very strong, as you can see. Um, so I'll just leave them in there until the time comes and then essentially next year instead of having something in between these two ferns like I would do normally in the centre that um, Ensete that's over there I'm going to pot them up keep them as a sort of house plant when I need to this year and then I'll put them into a bigger pot and just have it sat on the patio here on the end of this big stone effectively so it'll sort of cover up that and it gives it room to get some leaves out backwards as well um, so I probably won't put anything in there unless it's a bit of ground cover um, but you'll notice along with the ginger through there that's obviously got a red tinge to it and then this last fern which is in the center and it's sort of just covering up the stems or the bottom of the stems of the um, bananas is a um, Dryopter erythrorosa brilliant so when the new fronds unfurl uh, they've got a red tinge to them so that ties up quite nicely without being too overpowering with the colours there so I'm quite happy with that bed that's pretty much done until the dahlias decide that they've had enough this year so yeah so that'll be another Lophosauria going in there and that, that, that's that bed pretty much done and then if we come across to this bed this one looks really good again if I look up the same line as that one we were just looking up sort of from the left hand side of the house you can see that we've got the drop to its errata which will size up hopefully a little bit and just come over the edge of the walls eventually in a rosette shape then we've got the cannas at the back there which have done really well they're actually if you take the leaves out of the equation as it were and go to the top of the stems the can is actually taller than the banana so that takes up that middle one like the ginger did over there and then the banana takes up the sort of high line as well so that's a, you know that's two sort of views sorted if you like i just got to do the other 32 possible ways you could be looking at any part in the garden but we'll get there in the end so yeah like i said the canna floor the canna is a canna iridiflora, iridiflora ehemini and it's really the it's it's absolutely loved it there 
absolutely loved it. I've had nice flowers uh, when they eventually came out. They're a bit late. Well, I, I don't know if they're late or not, but it seemed late. They were sort of August time they started coming out. Um, but I haven't obviously got it for the flowers. This is for the foliage. Um, yeah. So he'll just stay there. I'll just let him die down or cut him off and just mulch him in heavily and see how he does. Um, I said before, I might get a climber be between that canner. I'm sorry, it's a really awkward time of day for doing this angle. But where that canner is, this little gap that's down between that and the brick wall. Uh, I might put a climber in, evergreen climber, and grow it up and across a trellis across the top of there and over towards the waterfall. The reserve will be the Clematis armandii, which I'm going to put over there as well, and then hopefully they can meet in the middle. Or I've got that good contact for climbers, so I might just say, um, do a bit of indulgence with having like flowers, you know, like, like some nice reds or colours, because this will be full sun in the middle of the day, so I want some nice deep shades of red or something like that, um, if I'm going to do that. But yeah, just evergreen is the priority on that one. Um, if we come around, the rest of this bed's been alright. It was one of them that sort of just took form as it took form. <coughs> it's obviously another triangle, as you can see there, marrying up with the rest of them. Like I said, that's an errata marrying up with that errata. Um, there's a polypodium vulgar, another one right at the back behind the banana. That's completely different um, climate to the one on the opposite fence. So the fact that they're thriving in both is uh, pretty good it gives me a lot of options if I need them so I might look into the polypodiums a bit more uh, you probably can't see it but the dry up to it's um, not the dry up to it's the arachnoids uh, is down there doesn't seem to be particularly liking it but he's just there for a minute so I'll decide what I'm gonna do with him so this um which just came in one of the pots with one of the ferns it was just one little leaf that had obviously got in there from the nursery there's a saxifraga uh, stolony fera it looks like it's sending out runners everywhere so we'll see but it did get decapitated by cat that one which is why it's on lockdown speaking of plants that are on lockdown we've got this giant burmese honeysuckle over here um on the right, that is a Lonnie Sarah Hildebrandiana. Um, he's one of the ones that I'm most thinking about at the moment because um, I can't seem to get it going. Uh, basically, I've had it since the beginning of September now, and it literally doesn't look the same as the day I bought it, but it's not grown anything. There's little shoots that keep looking like they want to just edge out, but then they keep not doing it. But what I did is I think I maybe made too much of a heavy potter mix when I first bought it and it just kept raining a lot because I wanted to keep it outside for as long as possible really just to toughen it up um, so yeah then I sort of um, a couple of weeks ago I went and put it in a greenhouse for a bit it didn't do anything there not my greenhouse my uh, mother's greenhouse just for a bit it didn't do anything there so I've changed the potter mix up made it a lot lighter it's been up in the only south facing window we've got on the house which is at the top of the stairs so not a particularly hot place um you know nice and open over the stairs so not like stuck in a room it's not done anything so i've just bought it out and I'm gonna see what happens with it really um one of the i'm sort of half wishing i put it straight in the ground when i got it i know it's a it's a risk but i think where i keep changing it and moving it and doing stuff with it and repotting it it's not getting a chance to get going so yeah one of them but that's going to go where the eucomus is there which i'll probably put in a pot next year because um the leaves are quite nice and they're in a real nice circle so i think it would overhang a big pot quite well um put that on the patio or something like that i did quite looking at that that was much more of an early interest in the year um it bent because I had several plants in front of it and it was trying to get some light, I think, or it was being forced, something like that. But anyway, yeah, the giant honeysuckles going to go there, run up that fence, come across here, hit this trellis. And then if you think there's going to be a pergola coming across in line with the middle coping stone sort of thing, uh, put, put one of these trellises effectively up horizontal and then run it across 
and then see how far I can get it across that way with the main stem and then train the offshoots over the pergola if I don't kill it. Um, so other than that, if we went through in the first video, just when I put that fence post in, it's just going to come out towards me a little bit just so it marries up with the edging of the two sort of flower beds beside it. Um, when it comes to gardening down there, there's not really a lot. I've got this, the small Cyathea cuperii, which is still throwing out new fronds at the moment. I don't know if you can see that one in there, probably not. But yeah, he seems to like it there in that pot, so happy days. We'll wait and put him out next year, maybe. Um, the Ensetti's ready to drag in if I need to. Uh, that one's ready to drag in if I need to. Need to decide what I'm doing with the honeysuckle. Bamboo, I'm just going to let it just do whatever the bamboo's going to do. It's in a planter, so it's not going to do anything too naughty, hopefully. Also, when I've done this fence post here, it'll open up this little area for me to continue making this raised flower bed if I want to. So we'll see what the space is like when the flat when the fence post is in there. Um, and yeah see what happens so I won't mind getting a little annual climber in there to climb up this side of the trellis uh, but we will see um, so with regard to this bed here you can see I've got this crisp fern here there's another one over behind the little banana pup um, which I might swap with that just so it ties up with that because they're the only two crested ferns I've got um, so yeah, he'll go across there and otherwise hopefully the camellias will do something. Um, but yeah, that's about it. So really, in the short term, my goal, I'm going on holiday so I don't know whether it would be a good time but I wouldn't mind getting the two, moving the Herrenhausen from the right, behind the right hand side of the climbing frame over next to the Arata in the centre of that sort of, um, after the Dixonia by the by the flag have that so it can get get some roots down put the two hydrangeas in there as well just the climbing hydrangeas just so they can get some roots down and then that'll mean next year when this when it's times right like june i can put a cyathea if not the one behind all the bananas in that pot over there um and maybe one over there as well but the other plants would have had they'll be they would have been in a good uh while and had a chance to get some roots in so they don't get bullied hopefully um, so yeah, that's pretty much short, short term. Medium term is uh, mainly between the rocks and the wood. The wood side of it is decide which trellis I want to put where on top, uh, re, re on top of the fence for the climbers. Um, and if I need to do anything, then do it now, if you know what I mean, rather than when I've done everything. Um, yeah, other than that, get the three, uh, four fence posts in, which is one just in front of that Dixonia bed, um, nearest towards us at the end of that sort of paving stone, that last sort of paving stone. Uh, get one in there for the roof coming across here. Put one there, one there, and then that, and one where that fence post is mocked up at the moment near enough. That'll be, I don't need to worry about actually doing the pergola this winter. That might even be two or three years time, but it'll mean that I can get on with everything at ground level, even though this ground level would be the last thing. But the idea is I get the fence posts in there, mock up what the patio will actually be out of these, and then I can sit on it for six months and see if it works or not before I do it next year, maybe. Um, yeah, that's it. So it's all gone reasonably well. Everything's evolving all the time. Uh, which is quite good. Um, most regret, I guess I could say, was chopping the big pop pups off of that banana because um, it's now sort of leaning to the left as opposed to that one, which is dead straight. So that's a little bit annoying, but it's not a deal breaker, as in I'm going to dig it all up and put another banana in there just because it's not straight. We'll see how it does. If it topples over, it topples over. Um, update on the water butt uh, that is full of water now it rained the last couple of nights uh, so that's full so at some point I'll because the irrigation comes around and up to this um, outside tap here so 
at some point I'll just extend it across there and run it off of one of those taps and just check whether it actually works or not because even though I haven't got the other three or four butts that are going in the front garden I'm going to connect onto this the pressure should be the same because the pressure is dictated by the height of the uh, basically the distance of the outlet which is going to be the drippers to like the top of that tank if you see what I mean so it doesn't matter I could have a hundred of them the pressure being pushed through would still be the same it's just whether it runs out or not effectively flow rate but I don't need to worry about flow rate on this because um it's you know it's naturally a slow thing it's only on the one that's going up high that I need to do which I need to actually um do need to think about that because the um run of irrigation i've got around at the moment is pretty much the one i'm going to use for the um flower beds you know the low level the just just the drippers on the floor uh, so what i need to do is because stuff for the tree ferns and anything that's high up is going to need a bit of pressure i'm going to have to run it off a separate circuit or else it won't work because there's not enough pressure in doing it just off gravity on there um, so I need to run a whole new one out from there probably all the way because I'll have one or two pipes going along the bottom of there all the way across the bottom of there behind the bed uh, behind Camellia Corner like the other one is run it up and then the first takeoff run it through the back of that flower bed up behind the um, sorry I'll go over there so this sort of seat stroke planter I can bring it up from the flower bed and into that bit where the gravel is, that little um, sort of dip which I purposely left between the actual blocks and the seat. Run the um, irrigation up there and then come up here and as I said last time I left a tube going up through to the top of the soil so to cut a tee into the irrigation there, send it up into that flower bed come up tuck it in amongst all the rocks because what I'll do here is I'll sort of get some potted plants but I'll leave alcoves in the rocks so that I can just put some plants in there but they'll, only, they'll probably need a drip so run the drip across there probably be tree ferns or cyathias <coughs> in all those sort of beds going around that corner so run um, a high sort of run of irrigation and then some sprayers down on the floor so that it gives it that sort of misty jungle type one rather than drip feeders like a mist you know mist sprayers as it were um so yeah and then on you can see there's the remnants of the vertical garden that was against that fence post uh, i've seen all i've needed to see with that with regard to how to make it work and what sort of plants to use so uh, i've just taken them down just letting all the nature move out of it for the couple of days until i sort it out but if you can imagine this fence post here there's going to be one there and one there i'll probably do the vertical gardens around these two um so i think that would look quite good and i can even do it on that one the other one will have a climber on it anyway that one might be covered by a climber so yeah all good really um it's quite funny because you sort of say to yourself at this time when the year's end thinking oh you know what would i change something that really annoys me is that this climbing frame is not square to the house it's actually kind of like that if we look at it now if you see what i mean it's slightly on an angle and also i actually put it in six inches too far to the right and what that meant is i did have the original um so you might say that all oh, right yeah, yeah yeah i should uh, if i could do anything else now i'd redo that climbing frame and make it all square and everything but if I did that I would have gone with plan A on the garden which was like a sort of this area here would have been a sort of palatial Roman palatial Hadrian's villa style patio area and hot tub up in there and it, it wouldn't have been jungle you know what I mean there wouldn't have been any jungle or primitive or ferns or any idea like that about it so it's funny how it all works out but works out it does hopefully so yeah, um, God knows what I've done by the next time I do a video. Uh, I can't really do a lot until I get either all the waterfall stuff, pump, blocks, spillway, sand, cement, etc. So that's sort of on one of them till I've got a spare 600 quid coming up to Christmas. Uh, these fence posts I could probably put in, move the plants like I said earlier, maybe put those other plants in. 
um, maybe start getting trellis up around somewhere once I decide what I'm doing with it but yeah we'll see anyway hope you're having a good day thank you very much